UFC 188 has just wrapped up. We're in Mexico City. And I'm joined by Dana White. Dana, before we get into the main event, let's talk about some other fights that happened on the card. What did you think about the undercard and the kickoff of the of the uh, pay per view? Um, you know, it was a little rocky. There were some good ones, uh, and there were some bad ones. You, you, the one thing you have to understand here: this altitude kills you. And if you do not prepare, um, it, it, you're, you, you know, you see what happens. I think we broke the record for guys puking backstage. Like six guys puked after their fights. Um, so yeah, it's tough. The altitude's tough here. There was a flyweight fight on the undercard between Henry Cejudo and Chico Camus. Um, Henry, there had been a lot of talk that he could possibly fight Mighty Mouse next. Do you feel like he could be a contender at flyweight? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I'm right here right now. I'm not sure where he is right this moment. Once the pay-per-view portion kicked off, we had Kelvin Gastelum versus Nate Marquardt at 185. Um, Kelvin is pretty adamant saying he wants to go back down to welterweight. He wants to talk to you and Joe Silva. He's hoping that that dominant performance gets him there. What are your thoughts on that? It's not about a dominant performance for him. It's about getting down under weight. He, he, can't, he was two pounds over. He had to cut weight to get to 185. First of all, I don't think he can make the weight, number one. Number two, um, it's really dangerous. And number three, it really screws things up around here when he does it. So um, what I'm going to have to see out of him is a hardcore nutritionist in his corner and him trying to, to, to do the right things to get the 170. He, he, didn't, he didn't show me tonight that he can make 170. Now, after that fight, he did defeat Nate Marquardt, and you actually came back um, backstage to the medical tents to check on Nate. Um, what exactly did you have to say, or what, did, what were you looking to see? Well, you know, Nate Marquardt, I, I always tell that story about when, when, I, when I wasn't into women's fighting. When I went to this women's fight up in Northern California, I was there looking at Nate Marquardt. That's why I was there. And that was like, it was probably 14 years ago. That's how long that guy's been in the business. And, and you know, the heart he displayed tonight. And, you know, I just I wanted to talk to him after that fight. All right. Well, then after that, we had the co-main event of Eddie Alvarez and Gilbert Melendez. Um, split decision. How did you score that one? Um, yeah, I, 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 I gave the fight to uh, Eddie Alvarez, too. Rockhold and I were talking about it, you know, ringside. And it's, it's all about how you score that second round. And I think that elbow at the end of the round solidified the round for Eddie Alvarez. And I give him rounds two and three. Were you impressed with their performances? I mean, they're guys that have habitually been in the top five, top ten of lightweight, but that's a stacked division right now. I was blown away that Gilbert didn't jump on him in that second round. Eddie Alvarez was hurt. Eddie Alvarez had one eye, and, uh, you know, he could have kept circling to his right. He could have threw overhand rights, and that would have landed every time he threw him. And it, I didn't know if there was something wrong with Gilbert right. after the first round because I thought that fight was over. Right. All right. Well, then let's move on to that main event. We now have a new heavyweight world champion for the UFC, Fabrizio Verdum, with an incredible performance. Not only did he display his grappling, which won him the fight, but he really beat Kane up on the feet. Were you expecting that? Well, after, after that was, first of all, it was two, two of the best rounds you'll ever see from two heavyweights. And in this altitude was just insane. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that the, the problem in this fight was that Kane really underestimated the altitude here and you know he came in here late and um, had two years off and you know the whole time Verdun was here Verdun was training an even higher altitude than, uh, than, than Mexico City and it showed. Right and they actually said that the arena sits higher than where we were at in Mexico City for the rest of the week. People don't realize that you know you think fighting in Denver's tough Mexico City is a tough place to fight. Right. All right, now I know you don't like to match make on the spot, but Junior Dos Santos was here, Andre Arlovsky was here. They obviously want a shot at that title. And now that Kane is no longer, longer the champion, Junior feels like he's rightfully in place to be the number one contender. When you look at heavyweight, is it nice to see a list of guys who could be contenders? Yeah, it definitely shook up the heavyweight division. Stipe's in that list too. And both those guys were mad dogging me tonight here, both <laughs> giving me gestures, I want the fight, you know. So yeah, it, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting. And you know, Cain Velasquez is going to come back Absolutely. like a bat out of hell. Absolutely. All right, that wraps up UFC 188 here, but UFC 189 International Fight Week just a few weeks away. How excited are you for that? I'm pretty friggin' excited <laughs> for that fight. Um, yeah, it's going to be an awesome week. It's going to be an awesome show, and uh, I can't wait for it. You know, the energy and the buzz that will be in Las Vegas is going to be ridiculous, and I'm really looking forward to it. A whole week of events going to be really fun. Thanks so much, Dana. Thank you. Thank you.